live from Las Vegas, it's The Cube, covering Magento Imagine 2019. Brought to you by Adobe. Hey, welcome back to Las Vegas. Lisa Martin with Jeff Frick. We're coming to you live from Magento Imagine 2019. Welcoming to theCUBE for the first time, Gary Spector, the VP of Commerce, Sales, and Customer Success at Adobe. Gary, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, I'm, I'm <laughs> thrilled to be here. So there's about 3,500 people here. You guys have, from 60 plus countries. That's right. I think 100 sessions, 150 speakers. It's people coming down from ceilings, up from the floor. And we're streaming live. On first the general set, stream, first yes. ever. That's right, someone tweeted out that there are 35,000 people <laughs> watching. Marketing probably loved that yeah, and had I'm a heart sure attack at the did. same time. Not exactly accurate, but I'll, you know, I'll take what I can get. But tell us about the event, the spirit of the event. This is kind of yesterday evening things kicked off. What are some of the things you're hearing from customers, partners, developers? So I think the thing that's really unique uh, about Imagine is that it does involve partners, the community, developers, uh, along with Magento and our customers and our prospects. And it makes it really different uh, because the developer community and our partners are so passionate about Magento. And I think everybody feels really good about the marriage of Adobe and Magento. You had uh, technologies that were very well aligned, not overlapping. Uh, it enables us to extend the capabilities of what we can do from both the Adobe side or the Magento side. I like to say that the color palette got a lot bigger. And I think there's a lot of excitement around that and what that means to all of these people, developers, partners, the ecosystem, customers, prospects. So the energy is really high. Uh, I think obviously people are, you know, what's next? And where does this, you know, what does this mean for Magento? And I think it means investment. I think it means a higher rate of, of uh, uh, agility and an expansion of what we do, uh, acceleration of our roadmap. So I think people are very, very positive. And this is my fourth Imagine. And it's really the, I've never felt the energy higher than at this Imagine. So it's exciting for me. Gary, one of the interesting ways that you talked about community, um, and, and everybody wants developer communities, right? Sure. And you guys also have open source as a passion, but you, you phrased it in a way I'd never heard before, is that you like going to sleep at night knowing that there's a whole bunch of other CEOs betting their business That's right. on this platform. Yeah. And it's not just you guys. So it's a really different way to think about open source. We often think of the developers and their smart people outside your four walls contributing code, but it's not often couched in terms of the business terms no. that there's other people betting their business. That's right. Thinking about how are they going to help grow your business by building their business on top of it, Magento. That's what drives the passion of the community. It's not, these people realize that there's a symbiotic relationship here. If Magento's successful, the ability for them to be successful is, is very broad. Uh, and if, if Magento's not successful, then you, know, you have to ask yourselves, did I, did I make the right bets? So a lot of our tech partners have built these great solutions on top of Magento, and it's a, it's a partnership. And you don't have that anywhere else. It's, and again, I sleep better at night, to your, to your point. I don't, I don't know where you got that quote, but it's actually mine. No, it's no, 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 I think I got it from your Argentina 2017 but, talk, perhaps. But it's actually, <laughs> it's, it's true. Right. Uh, I know that all of these tech partners, these CEOs, they have my back. I, I, I'd like them to know that I have theirs. Right. And, uh, and I don't think Adobe has any, there's no reason or rhyme why that would ever change. I think it, Adobe will enhance it. And I think that's why there's so much excitement here. Well, and it's really a validation, and what, what we talked about before, the prior segment, was now to bring the marketing tools uh, and the AI and all the power that, that's in that big building in San Jose, yeah. free the commerce transaction, really, to your point, adds so much more horsepower yeah. to the total solution. It, it, the, like I said, the color palette just got a lot bigger. There's so many more things that we can do and so many more colors we can use to create these great experiences for our brands and our customers that we could have done before, but it was a lot of work. But now we've got a, a, you know, all of the makings of a platform that will enable that. And, and we're already pretty far along in, in, in taking the Adobe Experience Cloud and, and making that work. And 
I, I'm just really excited about the future and what this offers for, for our customers and our brands. We've heard a number of guests today talk about just what you were referring to a minute ago, and that was this, really this symbiosis of Adobe, the, the power that Adobe brings, mm -hmm. the, the data that Adobe brings, along with Magento. Sure. So a new Adobe Commerce 5 was just launched a couple months ago at Adobe Summit, powered by Magento Commerce. But you look at it as analytics, advertising, um, marketing, commerce, mm -hmm. fundamentals for managing what is a changing and highly demanding customer experience because we want more and more that, things accessible right. from right here. So some of the feedback from customers, partners, developers since that announcement and now going, ah, okay, now it can actually touch and see and play with sure. these two symbiosis machines coming together. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's not a hard thing to get. I think when the acquisition first happened, there's a little let's wait and see and make sure they get it right. And I think what I feel today, or what, what people have given to me today is the feedback that they're, they're believers. That they, they know that we're going to execute on this strategy, and this strategy is going to allow us to extend our lead on our competitors, which in return allows these brands and these you know, commerce players to extend their lead on their competitors. Let's talk about the small and medium business folks for a minute. Mm -hmm. When the announcement was made last year, the intention, right after Imagine 2018, sure. I believe, for Adobe to acquire Magento, and then right after they acquired Marketo, there was some concern for, is Adobe going to kind of shift what Magento has been doing so successfully for so long, mm -hmm. away from focusing on those smaller merchants to the enterprise folks? Today, yesterday and today, we heard some great, exciting announcements with what you guys are doing with Amazon Sales Channel, mm -hmm. with Google Shopping, and it sounded like the, the small and medium business-sized folks probably going, yes, this is what we need. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that. I, I mean, you, you mentioned two, right, along with PWA and some of the other things that we're doing. While these can be leveraged in the enterprise, they were built for the mid-market and the SMB space. And there is no doubt that Adobe and Magento both understand how important SMB in the mid-market is. And in fact, we've seen acceleration in the SMB space since the acquisition uh, from the Magento side of the house. And uh, Adobe is fully committed and knows that there's market share there to be had. And the application or the business problems that we solve at the enterprise are still applicable for the mid-market and the SMB space. They're handled in a little bit different of a manner, but they have the same aspirations. And the solution's going to be able, when you look across you know, everything that you're going to be able to do, it plays for both markets. And Adobe has an incredible opportunity to really drive market share in this mid-market. They don't have a big footprint to there today, even if you capture just a small portion of it, and it's our plans to capture a large portion of it, but even a small portion of it is going to make a big impact on Adobe. So I, I think that we will see acceleration in the mid-market and in the SMB space with what we're doing, what we're developing together, and the different types of products that we can offer to those markets that Adobe has in its broader portfolio. And of course, on the enterprise side, what, what we don't see here that we saw at Adobe Summit a couple weeks back are some of the really big integrators sure. um, who have huge practices built around and on top of the Adobe you know, tool set that now you get a leverage, I'm sure you're pretty excited about as, uh, as run and field. Yeah. There's a, again, a whole nother group of people, not necessarily CEOs, but managing partners. That's right. Who have bet their jobs, bet their livelihoods, bet their practices on this, uh, and now you get to take advantage of those resources as well. Absolutely, and I think that, you know, a lot of the large integrators and partners, I think everybody's starting to understand that, you know, commerce is very different now than it was five or 10 years ago, right? It's, I call it bite small, chew fast. And you know, HP is a great example where they started in you know, some of the smaller APAC countries including, and then went to Brazil and they're looking at the US last. And it, but they're taking it a step at a time. One country, one country, one country. And a lot of our big retailers or brands that want to expand globally are doing the same things. Or companies that have portfolios of brands, it's one at a time. Bite small, chew fast. Launch, be successful, launch, be successful. And I think the SIs, in, including the large partners, understand that. 
and they're changing the way that they look at businesses holistically. So I think right time, right place. Yeah, we had Jillian Campbell from HP on right after her keynote this morning and it was an interesting kind of POC program and I said, what were some of the market dynamics that identified APAC as the right market to start in. And part of it, I think, was that from a historical legacy perspective of, of using Magento on the HP Inc. side. But when, some of the things I found interesting to them was that leveraging the data to understand the cultural e-commerce oh, differences. Sure. And how different cultures you know, interact with different social media platforms or purchasing platforms differently and right. how important it is to really understand yeah. those commerce patterns and start to drive conversions from there and then go right. success, roll it out, rinse and repeat. Well, and she nailed it, right? I mean, uh, buy online, pick up and store versus having it delivered to your home. You know, if you live in the middle of India, uh, what's the reality of you getting that delivered in an hour? Um, and you know, it, you look at a, a country like Russia, which is very spread out, right? So there's not a high density outside of a lot of their major cities, and you have a lot of the same issues. If you're going to do, you know, have it shipped to your home, how long is it going to take? It might be easier just to go pick it up in the store. And I think it's different in every region. And it's good to be able to have access to that data to get a good read on what are the things our customers want, specifically to drive the experience they need within that region. Right, key for a company, whether it's something the size of an HP Inc. or not, to be able to scale globally, but also have that sort of local market adaptation where you're able to react, understand the preferences in your markets, for and sure. deliver exactly what those consumers want. So having a tool like Magento is the power yep. to enable that global scale regional adaptation is really, a, it's a driver. Yeah, and, and, and I think you start to add complexity when you, when you look at do people, or do they use their phone? Do they use their computer? Do they use social networks and buy buttons? And you know, we, I have an interesting dynamic in my own house where I've got a, a 13 year old, and the way that she would shop online is different than the way that, that my, my wife would shop online, which is very different from how I would shop online. You know, I, I browse and go to the store. My wife uses her computer my daughter shops on Pinterest or Instagram or Facebook. Very different journeys for the three of us and we could be buying the same thing and we're all going to do it differently. So it's, it crosses generations as well. Yes. Right. So Gary, it feels like kind of the dust has settled post Adobe acquisition where everybody feels kind of comfortable and it's been a year and you know, everything didn't go bananas. So as you look forward now after things have kind of settled, what are some of your priorities over the next year if we sit down a year from now? What are you working on? I can tell you that for me, the, the biggest priority for me is to make sure that the mid-market and the SMB flywheel is effective. The way that we go to market, the way that we target that segment, and it's not that I'm not interested in the enterprise, I'm extremely interested in the enterprise, but we have a lot of people that are working on the enterprise. And, you know, it, it, Adobe didn't have doesn't have a deep domain expertise around the mid-market, but with Marketo and Magento, you now do. So for me personally, I want to make sure that that flywheel is well run, it's well oiled, it's set up for success, that operationally the things that we do to drive uh, market share in that segment run as effectively as Adobe, the rest of Adobe on the enterprise side. It's a new sales motion for Adobe. But the good news is I think Adobe understands that, we understand that as a company, and I think over the next year, for me, that's where my focus is going to be. Great. So if we keep looking out to the next year, mm -hmm. this is your fourth Magento Imagine. It is. Is there going to be Magento Imagine 2020? <laughs> so I will tell you that there will be an Imagine 2020, and I will share details around that Wednesday. Uh, I've been asked to help close Imagine out, and when I do, uh, I will be thrilled to announce our plans for Imagine 2020. So can folks watch that on the live stream tomorrow, Wednesday the 15th? They can. Are you going to be coming up from the floor, the ceiling, you know, or? I think I'm probably just going to dance on out. I have been uh, invigorated. I love being here. Imagine is the one opportunity every year where I come out of this thing just feeling really good about the opportunities that we have ahead of us. And by Wednesday, 
although tired, uh, I'm usually really happy to, to be going back and getting in the field with my teams and, uh, and, and just driving opportunity and I think we have an amazing one. So. Well, we'll be all watching. Is it, is it imagine.magento.com to watch the live stream? Or magento.imagine.com. Go to the magento.com site. Yes. Wednesday, <laughs> tomorrow in the afternoon, you're going to be able to hear more about what's to come next year. Gary, thank awesome. you so much for giving us time. No, thanks for having today. me. Today, our Enjoyed pleasure. It. It's great to meet you both. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you. For Jeff Frick, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Magento Imagine 2019 from Vegas. Thanks for watching.